Hi, what's up guys? It's me, P, and I'm back with another video for The Femme Files. So this is a bit more of um, a little bit more personal. I just feel like I have a lot to talk about when it comes to this topic. But first of all, I did just want to say a quick happy holidays to all of you. And I really hope everyone's been staying really safe and healthy during these crazy, crazy times. And um, all we can hope for is a better 2021. It's right around the corner. So fingers crossed for <laughs> things looking up. Anyway, so what I wanted to actually discuss for this video was why I'm still single. I'm 25, I'm very openly queer. I've definitely been on a journey with my sexuality for many, many years now, but I've truly, and if I'm being brutally honest, really struggled with dating, or I should say like having committed relationships. Um, I definitely can say I've dated a few people and um, it's been more on the casual route and it hasn't really been anything too serious. And I guess I kind of wanted to talk about like why that may be because for a while, I didn't even know myself. For a long time, I guess I was like, you know what, I'm just not really meeting the right people and it's just not really like vibing on both ends. But I really tried to do a deep dive on myself as a person and maybe be like, why is this not necessarily really working for you? I guess for starters, in high school, I never really truly felt that like exciting teen romance that I think a lot of people tend to. And I think there were times when I thought I did, just, you know, based on living in a heteronormative society, I would block my feelings that I would ever have for girls. And at that time, it was one girl at the time who I really, really had feelings for. And I was just going along with the crowd and it was things that I believed in as well and like thought those were what feelings were until I came to terms with what I actually felt deep down years later. So I feel like I kind of missed that boat in high school, unfortunately, because I wasn't seeing a lot of like media representation of women who also loved other women. And at the time too, I never would have thought my friend would really actually truly have feelings for me. So I just like blocked that out. like as much as I could because there were so many factors. I didn't want to ruin a friendship. And um, when I look back at that now, sometimes it, it is a little sad because I feel like, you know, I watch shows now. Like I just recently started watching Atypical. So spoiler, if you haven't seen it, just skip the part of this video. Like it brought me back to me being 16 years old. You know, these two teenage girls who totally have feelings for each other. And that's the storyline I think I needed to see when I was 16. Like, I think that would have been so beneficial. And you know, there's this thing where a lot of queer people can relate to this, where they do feel like they really missed on having that really fun teenage romance because they were so closeted. That was me. And I think I actually like carried a portion of that throughout my 20s as well. And now I've reached my mid 20s and I think I've conquered a lot, but, um, yeah, that was, that was a really, really big thing to me at the time was maybe like not having a full like sense of identity yet. You know, like maybe when I turned 18, I was very sure of who I liked, but I was always very afraid of not so much of what other people would think of me. It was more of what the person would think of me. You know, when you have a crush in a heterosexual relationship, I feel like, you know, it's still the same thing. You're putting yourself out there to the other person but it's more like the norm. And I hate even saying that, but it's more the norm of like boy meets girl. The boy wants to ask the girl out, takes a chance. The girl wants to ask the boy out, can take a chance as well. But for me, me taking a chance on a girl, I was so scared. Cause I was like, what if they don't want to be my friend anymore? What if they're weirded out by me? Like my, I just wish I didn't feel that like, um, that scared to do so. And um, I struggled with that for so many years and that was like a huge part of my identity that I totally like shut the door on. Yeah, it, it was pretty sad. I wonder if sometimes maybe people, I've even talked to some of my friends who say like, I think you just can be a little picky or maybe I have like unrealistic expectations. And to be honest, it's not like I expect so much from like what my partner needs to be. I think I'm a hopeless romantic. 
I'm a Libra sun. <laughs> My Venus is in Libra as well, which means like we're all about the romance. Like I'm very romantic and I think that I really look for that spark or I need to have that connection with someone in order for me to like continue moving forward or you know like really really wanting to pursue something with someone and I have felt that before I felt that for people and unfortunately sometimes it just doesn't work out but it's one of those things I just need and I, I can't really explain it and um, ultimately whatever's meant to happen will and I'm very open to always meeting new people but I'm always looking for that like automatic connection with someone and there's a lot of people who I talk to who maybe didn't feel that like connection or spark with their partner right away but then as time moves on like it grows and develops. I feel like I truly have yet to experience that. I think with anyone I've dated um, or had a fling with whatever it was to me there was always like an instant connection with them and like I couldn't really explain it to other people. I know that like even if my friends ask me like, you know, what do you really see in like so-and-so? Um, especially if it's maybe not really working out. I sometimes, I sometimes just don't even know what to say. It's like an unexplainable feeling. And I, I'm a huge believer in chasing that. And I don't think you should ever like lower your standards per se. Like I think, you know, you know your worth and that's really important. And I definitely know my worth, but um, sometimes I wonder if I'm like chasing something that could be just unrealistic because it's just like a feeling. Like sometimes I think I take away how that relationship could be for me as a whole because I'm like so overwhelmed and excited by like the passionate feeling. I'm a very passionate person. So I think um, I really, really hold on to things like that. And I think sometimes if it's not there, I don't, I don't pursue it anymore. Maybe that's something I need to work on. <laughs> I don't know, if anyone else like can relate to what I'm saying, please let me know so I don't feel like I'm the only one. Another reason as to why I think I could still be single is that I definitely feel that when I like go through a heartbreak situation, it like hits me really hard. I don't really take those things super lightly and that's just part of who I am. I am an emotional person. I get, I get pretty jealous of the people who can kind of like bounce back and um, are like ready to go. <laughs> Even after like they go through something really difficult, um, I admire those types of personality types because for me, it really like cuts deep. Like I get very, very hurt if I've been really into someone and it just like totally doesn't go in the way I was like hoping it would. Sometimes I feel like that can also hold me back from like really, really opening myself up to someone all the way. Um, maybe someone who could be better for me. I think I've definitely held on to some situations for longer than I should have, when really it's like the signs were all there and it just wasn't working out in my favor. But, you know, I also think it is really important to let your heart fully heal before you do open yourself up to someone else where it can be a committed relationship. And maybe that's something I still have to work on. Yeah, I still think about someone from my past quite often and maybe that has been a little detrimental for me in terms of like wanting to really move forward and meet someone else. But I also think that I have to have faith in the fact that like, I know myself and I know my heart and I know when it is the right person that maybe comes along into my life, whether it's gonna be a committed relationship or whether it's gonna be something more casual. I have to trust that like, I, my heart will be able to like open up to that person and I can maybe let go of some like past feelings for someone else. Because I mean, I feel like in my past, when I've dated, I've always feel like maybe I wasn't really giving my heart like a chance to fully heal sometimes and being like fully, fully good with myself first. You know, like love yourself. And I think I need to remind myself to do that sometimes. Like, yes, I've been more confident lately, especially since I've like fully come out and I'm like ready and, um, the support I've received from like my friends and my family and you guys has been absolutely incredible. But I also think there's a codependency issue I have sometimes where like I seek love and validation from others where it's like, no, like I really need to get deep down within myself and like be cool with being single and 
just trust in the process. To go along with what I've maybe gone through in the past, especially when it came to dating women in my early 20s, I, I went through a lot of tough times. I really, really did. I feel like I, I was also still figuring myself out in my early 20s. I don't think I was like really um, so sure of myself that I feel like I might have also been attracting women who weren't so sure of themselves and their sexuality. An ex of mine actually even told me that um, you attract what you are and what you feel, you know? So I feel like especially during those times, me not really like owning myself completely and 100 percent maybe i was just attracting people who were kind of more experimenting and then i would be opening up to them my heart would be like fully on the line and they just weren't feeling the same way and i was like oh god <laughs> great honestly at the end of the day it's nobody's fault like it is what it is um i can never I would never be mad at someone if they don't feel the same way about me and you know if they're also not sure about wanting to be with a woman like how could I ever expect that from someone else? Like, we all just deserve to be happy and be with who we want to be with. But um, there was a large like time frame in my life where I was really, I think just attracting the people who just weren't necessarily right for me. And I had to deal with like a lot of heartbreak situations because of that. And like my friends saw me go through that. And um, once again, if anyone can relate to that, maybe maybe because you weren't so sure of yourself at the time and your identity maybe that's why i was bringing in those types of people and it was just it was pretty shitty at the time not gonna lie another thing i feel like i actually have to deal with is i definitely have some trust issues and i didn't really dive into that part of myself until like early 2020 because when you look at me as a person of course i i definitely come off as very trusting and i i open up right away. I really put a lot of like trust into other people. But because there's been so many situations where I feel like things just haven't like worked out, I've just like watched my guard keep going up and up and up. And you know what? Maybe that's healthier for me. But there also comes a time when it's like, let those guards down sometimes. And I feel like over the past year, I've been really afraid to. I feel like I get really scared or I sometimes get into my head that something's just not gonna work out. Sometimes like something before even really starts, like I could start dating someone, before it would even go anywhere, I would already be thinking in my head, oh, it's not gonna work out. Subconsciously, I think I was like thinking it wouldn't work out. And that's not healthy. Even if it doesn't, that's fine. It just wasn't meant for you at that time. But I feel like maybe like low key, I was manifesting that a little bit. Maybe like a lot of people have. I've been getting a lot more into like manifestation and um, trying to attract like positive energy and putting positive energy out. And I don't think I realized like I was putting out a lot of negative energy, I think, obviously unintentionally. And I never used to really be that way. And I think that's something I'm still gonna try and work on because you know, you can't help it if you know, when things don't work out naturally, you're going to adapt those types of um, habits, but I think it's really important not to. I would love to hear what you guys think and not being afraid to kind of like, you know, do a deep dive on yourself. I like to look into myself to kind of be like, well, why is this affecting you so much? And maybe like, what have been the patterns? I feel like once you can get to a point where you're finding out those parts about yourself and you know yourself and you are happy internally because you have to be happy with yourself before you can really be with someone else. I think like that's probably one of the most important things. I'm also trying to um, get to a point where I'm fully, fully comfortable. So I would love to hear your guys' stories if you also relate to anything I said in this video. And if you didn't, that's okay. I hope uh, you still enjoyed it. But please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you liked this type of topic and if there's anything else you would like me to talk about that has to do with anything in the queer community, um, please let me know. My DMs are always open and I always love talking to you guys. Anyways, I hope you have a great night wherever you are in the world and I will talk to you all soon.